what are the pros and cons of, of icing and and, and what, what what can we do instead mm. have you looked at any of the stuff i sent you or what are your current thoughts and perspectives on the utility for icing well what about what you said just before where you want that healing process to occur so that that's probably one of the main reasons why you wouldn't ice yeah mm -hmm. you can you can let that swelling occur you can let that the start of regeneration start to happen pretty much um, which makes complete sense yeah I'm not the biggest again I don't get fancy at all if, that, if the person enjoys icing and they think it makes a difference go for it see I would I would step in and be like education like is there is, if it depends what we're talking yeah, about yeah. though if we're talking about psychological benefit and jumping in an ice bath Jordan yeah. Potts style yeah you know Jordan Potts yeah. right that man fucking loves yeah. his ice bath and I love the fucking Wim Hof man yeah well, oh hell yeah <laughs> Hell yeah, Iceman, baby. But the breathing yeah. and the endocrine benefits, yeah. hormone benefits, the psychological benefits, mood regulation, stress down regulation, I fucking love all of that. Mm. It just, uh, it's a shame because now I can see, and now it's really stacking up the evidence for repeat ice exposure, mm. reduction in hypertrophy. Yeah, okay. Like, Makes sense, yeah. but you know now it's like research paper after research paper. It's like damn, okay, that's that's a bit annoying because I, I do want to ice for those benefits. But you don't, yeah. You can still, I think you can still ice for different reasons, such as such as reducing, uh, oh, just a different type of meditation to reduce your stresses, your anxieties. Yeah, th yeah, those reasons. Absolutely yeah. love that. Yeah. But then, okay, let's be tactful. Like if you if you care. Yeah about reductions in hypertrophy yeah, yeah okay then let's take it maybe far a bit further away from the session mm. maybe let's take it on an off day or something yeah okay you know because i'm not the extreme guy of like just like all right don't ever ice mm. or don't ever sauna or don't ever this mm. or don't ever that Nah, man have a fucking donut mm. Nah, man have have your ice mm. and eat it too <laughs> you know Fucking uh, yeah but you know the guy um i got his name here dr gabe merkin who no. did who did he created the rice protocol yeah right the the was it rest ice compress elevate you got it he's gone back on what he said mm. he now doesn't agree with it and disagrees with what he said i can it's i can give you a quote if quote. you would want but i just think it's quote it. this is he's a harvard physician right um it's still taught in medical and physical therapy schools today it's listed on the national institute of health website as the top treatment for both acute and chronic sports injuries which is after reading after learning about all this it's like ah oh shit should it really be um now even merkin now disagrees these days he tells anyone who will listen that he was wrong about both rest and ice my rice guidelines have been used for decades but new research shows that rest and ice actually delay healing and recovery the man well, damn he's 84 now um he says if your muscles are sore you can relieve the pain with ice and yes we know ice is absolutely a pain analgesic reduction 100 percent but inflammation causing the soreness and swelling is actually bringing healing to the body. And by icing, you dampen the immune response. He says, you think you're recovering faster, but science has shown you're not. And then it can go on. But I like that. Yeah. But how brave is that mm. for a guy mm. to be like, all right, I'm in my 80s but, and I'm in my 70s, but I'm gonna, and I created this huge protocol that the world knows. But guys, I didn't have all the information. Mm. I like it. How open-minded And it's is probably that? something that I'll start to think about more now. And I'll probably listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> or I've just got all my information from you right now, so I'm good. Do you want me to keep going? Hey, I liked it. You can keep going. Um, I get... Because I can... Basically, you don't even have to watch it if I... I can summarize some of the stuff from those videos. Gary uh, Rennell. Have you heard of him? No. All right. Um... And th this was the interesting stuff that I that I heard from him and a couple of other sources about how fluid and swelling and uh, so first question is why are we icing? Like a goal with injury is to prevent further loss and regenerate tissue that's been damaged. So the question is how does icing heal that pro help that process? Like, do you have an answer to that? Because he says it doesn't. Yeah. Well, what I I guess the reason why people ice is just to reduce that swelling to right. And, and if you're juicing swelling, you, well, if you've got swelling, you've got more muscle inhibition. If you've got muscle inhibition, you can't use those muscles. Yeah, right? So the reason I think why people are icing is to get rid of all that swelling so they could start to stimulate those muscles again, get moving, don't lose too much muscle bulk. 
and then get going. I think that was that was the reason why, or what I think, why people why people ice, yeah, to get rid of that. But saying if we want to focus more on the the healing process and get everything regenerated properly, then icing shouldn't be a thing. But I think that that's why I thought people would ice. Right. And that that definitely that's a rationale that makes like a logical sense. But then the 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 counter on uh, kind of jumping ahead is that well what's going to be much more effective than deadening the area reducing the uh the immune response and and healing properties like macrophages to the area mm. well swelling and fluid retention it's is controlled by the lymphatic system mm. right and so a lot of them are what i'm hearing consistently is like we need movement mm. we need to facilitate the lymphatic system mm. right and the lymphatic system is done through, you need movement. You need this pump and relaxation, yeah. right? If you can't contract the muscle voluntarily, you can't take the joint through a safe range of motion, you take it what, with what you can. And number two is that muscle stim. Yeah. Muscle stim. And yeah. it's like, I just, my, one of my clients had a lung pneumothorax, right? Yeah. Basically, his lung collapsed. Yeah. Um, and he can't do anything for two, three weeks. So I'm like, this is the third time now. So all right, let's do this. This is the first time with me, but third time. Let's do this right. Muscle stim. We know it's going to decrease muscle atrophy, yeah. and which is huge because that's yeah. what we want. And that's that can have same effects with uh, any type of injury where you have a lot of inflammation. And we can do it early. Yes. So like an ACL. Mm. Do you do you apply yeah, yeah, yeah. muscle stim for ACL? Uh, yeah, quads. Like, fuck yeah. Yeah, straight away. Because it's a way that you can just get those muscles stimulated muscles activating pretty much day one day two day three yeah i got here uh activating muscles around the damage site facilitates angiogenesis which if you remember is the formation of new blood vessels blood vessels helps recapillarize uh and recreate kind of new blood vessels and, and capillaries which is going to stimulate blood flow to the area and healing yeah. that's what we want yeah 100 percent. now and that's being used I don't use it too much on, let's say, just on a, um, a just an ankle roll or something like that, which which I, I probably should. Um, but ACLs, that's something that's been used for a while, and a lot of people do use it for any injury straight away. The one thing I don't know is like, excuse me, Kelly Starrett. Do you know of him? Oh, you don't. I don't oh, know. Shit. I don't know many people, dude. I know you. I know. <laughs> do you actually? Do you actually like you? You're pretty like insular with the amount of kind of exposure. Um, yeah, I know certain people, but I don't like go to this person, that person, yeah. that person, that person. I, yeah. I've got a pretty tight little tight circle following that. I like to fair keep. Kelly Starrett, I would recommend. He's 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 a doctor. He's actually a physical therapist. For, uh, comes from that background. He specialises um, in his understanding of mobility, movement, tissue recovery, and like he's 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 fucking brilliant. But. Um, he talked about his daughter had an injury. This is just N of one, but but him using it with his daughter, who was in a in a cast or a sling, mm. she was muscle stimming hours and hours every day. Mm. And then I'll hear other examples of people like really hitting it hard. The package might say do it every second day because they mm. they don't want to they want to be liable for anything just in case. But it seems like muscle stimming for hours every day is super effective for like a, a non painful activation of the muscle to help mitigate atrophy and basically effectively uh move the lymphatic system mm. but do you have a protocol for it because i don't i don't hear it no how do you figure out how long to do it for just see what happens it's just, we got to test it yeah well it's not it's not doing you any damage no and that's the thing I, is it no no big thunder baby yeah, the, no it's not, that. it's not doing any damage um Obviously, if you do too much, it's just like an exercise. If you do too much, you're going to come out sore. You're going to come yeah, out fatigued. That's probably yeah. swelling, that type of stuff. And I think you've got to think of muscle stim that way. You only use it really early, and you don't need to use it once the person can do stuff. You just chuck it out. Well, I chuck it out. Um, but those early days, if you want to use it, go for it. If they're in a sling, mm. um, if they're in a cast yep. in that position, or if it's an ACL day week one something like that i don't i don't mind i don't have a protocol because i don't use it too much i don't use any machines pretty much hardly put my hands hands on doing massage and that type of stuff but you hardly put your hands on to massage i hardly 
do hands on work. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. So I don't I don't in the other, in my normal clinic I do a bit, but say in a strength conditioning scenario where everyone's athletes, I don't I hardly do any of that. So For I get sure. a move and I empower them. Yes. I empower them as much as Fuck possible. Fuck yeah. The movement. Um I'm gonna keep going on this ice thing. Because you're into it. I love it. I, I fucking big notes. Big. Um because I think it's like we've got to understand why and like question it because having another person like with your experience to bounce off it, oh, am I not seeing something here? Mm. What is the gray area here? Um, when tissue is damaged, the immune system initiates inflammatory response, which, which a 2010 study published in the Federation of blah, 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 a journal showed is necessary to heal damaged tissue and repair muscle. The body deploys its repair and cleanup crew in the form of macrophages, white blood cells that engulf and digest cellular debris. They produce protein, insulin like growth factor one, which is required for muscle repair and regeneration. The same, same study showed that blocking inflammation inflammation delays healing and prevents the release of igf1 so that's we can apply that theory to like how icing can delay mm. healing because of igf1 pathway being blocked ice delays this process by constricting blood vessels allowing less fluid to reach the injured site as demonstrated in this 2013 journal of strength and conditioning research the research showed that topical cooling delays recovery from eccentric exercise induced muscular damage additionally Arthroscopy showed that narrowing of blood vessels caused by icing persists after cooling ends, resulting in restriction of blood flow that can kill otherwise healthy tissue. That is icing causing more damage on top of an existing injury. What do you make of that? I think it makes sense. It that, does make sense. That's what I think. It's just, it's just a different way to think about it, really. Yeah, and like this idea of like, Swelling is bad. No, swelling yeah. is just waste at the end of an inflammatory cycle. Mm. We got to get that waste through. Mm. Move, motherfucker. Mm. And there's and there's different different ways you can, like the rest of that rice. You got compressed. You got elevate. There's still ways that you can help with trying to get a little bit of swelling and that type of thing. It doesn't have to be ice. There's meth, peace, and love. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. Do you even know what I'm talking about? Meth, peace, and love. <laughs> meth. <laughs> you went way along with that. You're like, yeah, man. <laughs> You're so supportive. <laughs> Tell me. You have a kid one day, you've, this kid's going to just spurt some just <laughs> nonsense. Yeah, hey, hey, do your thing. That's peace and love. Man, that's me. Um, movement, elevation, traction, heat. Meth. Movement, elevation, traction. I don't know what he means exactly by traction. What is it? This Why? is uh, John Paul uh, Calton Zaro. Heat. Yes. I don't know the research... Of if you're gonna chuck meth out, you gotta know why. So do some more research. And bring <laughs> me back heat. That's ha, hold on. Yeah, okay, sorry. Because if we know icing is on one end, if we know if we know the the, the negative effects of icing, for inflammation and healing and repair and remodeling, mm. well, theoretically we could apply the opposite end of heat, and then okay, why heat? Well, blood flow. Um, could it help us move fluid through the body, through the increase in heart rate, through the increase in total body temperature? I'm talking about a sauna, mm. for example. Mm. We know the benefits of sauna and decreasing all-cause mortality, at, uh, releasing heat shock proteins that decrease total inflammation in the mm. body, systemic inflammation. But the question is, how can we apply heat, like a heat pack, up and down the area? It may not be to the actual site, mm. but it could be up and down like a muscle stem. It's interesting. Something I never thought about. You never thought about heat? With acute muscle injuries, no. Nah. Probably because I've been taught the opposite. Please, go ahead. Tell me. What are they? What's their perspective on heat? Just heat's more of something that you do uh, after the acute phase. You, let's just say someone comes in with a... Go back to lower back because lower back's easy. Yeah. Uh, that someone's got a, uh, a tight lower back that's been that's going on for a while, that's when uh, you're taught to, all right, apply heat if you want to because it's going to loosen up the muscles. Do you have a duration that you wait? Or is it just until the swelling goes down? I don't, I don't use heat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you wouldn't use it in an acute phase for a while. You'd use it more on a chronic situation. That's what you kind of taught. More chronic, you'd use heat. Super acute, you use ice. That's kind of what you taught. What about a muscular... What about a spasm? What about tension? 
uh, high tone. Do you see the utility of heat? I don't really see the utility of heat at all. <laughs> Do you have you been in a sauna before? I mean, for if someone's coming in to see me, I'm not getting them to use heat. I'm I'm in the gym working. No, but no, no, no. In their own time, I'm talking about homework. Uh, I'm talking about the habits because we certainly see our our guys for a couple hours a week. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd rather them go into if we're talking about sauna or something like that. I'd rather them go into a sauna than just apply heat. Right. If they want to apply heat and it feels good, fucking go for it. Right. But, that, but that's how you are. You, yeah. you are. See, that's why I like you, Jordan Radliff, because. And that's why I wanted to have you on because, like, you're an open-minded motherfucker and, and, like, you... How do I say? You're not extremely... You're not very disagreeable. Like, you're, you have a tendency to be agreeable. You have a tendency to be, to be polite and cordial and, and respectable about your approach and how you conduct yourself. Man, I'm just like, I, I want to I talk to this motherfucker. <laughs> Sit down and have a chat. That's what we're doing now, baby. Talk some chimps. <laughs> Sorry, got off. you don't you don't use hate, so you can't really speak on it much. Um, no, nah, I don't prescribe it. Um, if there's someone that likes hate, say in the normal clinic that I work at, mm. someone someone's away. I'm, someone like me. Someone like you. Fucking love hate. You love hate. If you came in, you said my normal physio um, at the end of a session gives me hate for five minutes, and I fucking love it. That's what I'm gonna do for the last five minutes of the session. And I think when you see enough of those outlier individuals, you start to build patterns. I'm like, all right, so there's something here. It could be like a, like, do you see that? Have you like built patterns where like clients will come to you with things you don't really heard or know much about, but you start building like, all right, this could be really effective. Yeah, it has to like, again, it's N equals one. Everyone, everyone's totally different. But if someone comes in and they like that, another person comes in, they, they like that type of treatment. Um, I think it's more of, again, their past experience, what they've had before and that, Everything I reckon everything relates back to what we talked about at the very start is past experience. If someone likes heat, they they would have had heat before. Their old physio or whatever would have given heat. They have a positive association. Yeah. yeah. And that's where the placebo fit comes into play quite Oof. a lot. Placebo. It works. Yeah. And so the I think like that's a positive result. Mm. How much does it matter whether it was placebo or whether it was it was the other thing, whether it was the foam roll or it was the placebo? Mm. Doesn't matter. Does it? Yeah. No, not at all. You can. Some people say it does matter. Yeah, I'm trying to like. Is as long as you as long as you're getting a a good result. Like if they're foam rolling and they're training really well, fuck yeah, foam roll every time. Another acronym is peace. Protect, elevate, avoid anti-inflammatory modalities. Do you what? Do you have any? Uh, what's your two cents on like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory inter- drugs? Oh, actually, uh, definitely not early. You never use them early, mm-hmm. but um, I don't mind them. Do you, so what do you see the usefulness with them? Um, number one, to help with some inflammation, and number two, to um, help pain levels. So I'd never give them for the first week, Yeah, and that's normally when it's at it. That's when the healing process is going on um, the most. Um, if it's something that hangs around, I'd get them to talk to their chemist or talk to... Um, whoever the doctor or whatever if they want to get some anti-inflammatory type stuff um and follow the guidelines so why would the the pain i understand if someone's in debil- debilitating pain it's like i need this to stop mm. i understand mm. but why do we want to reduce inflammation um and that's exactly what i've learned today right that's the conversation right yeah. right yeah so and yeah this is me still talking right i get it I guess of what I what I've done before we've had this conversation about yeah. icing. Well, from what I'm learning is that if you remember from physiology, there's a pathway called COX two. Mm. COX two uh, helps release prostaglandins, which are chemical messengers, and these chemical messengers help kind of they're like inflammatory signaling um, molecules. And so, when we take NSAIDs, we reduce the COX two pathway, right? And so we don't get as many of these like immune system regulating factors out. And so we're down-regulating these important pathways that are mm. important in the repair and heal process as inf- that inflammation helps, right? Mm. And so that's kind of potentially a mechanism behind why maybe, all right, let's be careful about where we yeah. use them. Um, yeah, very true. But other than that... And again, I think it's the way that I've always done it is yeah. 
if someone doesn't like taking anti-inflammatories, you're not going to tell them to take it. If someone's had an experience where it's helped, there you go. And that's what I've gone off before. But I guess after having this conversation, ice and anti-inflammatories um, can affect healing um, time, processes, um, regeneration. And I've got to start to think about those things more. Right.